Hello Craft Warehouse followers. I am going to go ahead and just kind of show off some of the things that I am using today. Um, there's a couple bonus things that you don't necessarily need, but you can totally do it to um, upscale your piece here. So I got my little crescent moon shapes. They're so fun. I love these. Again, this is just an aluminum. And then I got my aluminum, I believe it's an inch, and my inch circles here. And then I am using this multifunctional hammer. Um, it has little pieces that come in and out. Uh, when you purchase this little kit, it does have two more little um, pieces that you can work with just to kind of upscale any looks you're doing. But we are going to be using that ball pin one today. Um, and then I always like to point out I am using this Stamp It Straight Tape, but it just helps me so um, I'm not covering up the piece while I'm doing it. And then my good, nice little block here. And then I have some jump rings. And then a the couple things I'm going to do to upscale it is I am going to do a chain necklace made out of Look at those fun aura beads. I love them. This is just a white one, but they're just so eye-catching. So I'm going to need my 18 or 20 gauge wire, and I'm using that good old one-step looper. And then I want my moon to have a little bit of a curve to it, so we're going to be showing you how to use this dapping block. It is awesome. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get started. So I'm just going to start by making these all hammer-toned. And I'm just going to tape down a little piece of it and start out for you guys. Um, I want to show you when you're putting this piece in, it has that little notch. And you want to make sure that's facing the bottom of your handle. And then you twist this guy until he's nice and tight. The way that this hammer is designed is you're actually going to be holding it down here. So when you're holding it like this, you're holding this from coming out. So then your um, design, your ball pin, or whatever may be in there is going to be held nicely, okay? And for this hammer tone look, I'm just going to go ahead and hit it everywhere. Um, I find it easiest if I kind of decide if I'm starting on one side and then I work my way all the way over. Um, sometimes I'm just sporadic and just kind of go everywhere. so you guys can see that. See, it's just starting to put those little dots, that hammer tone look in there. Maybe I'll zoom in a little bit so you guys can see that as I go along. The fun thing about this is it is a moon, so I don't have to make sure this is perfect. I mean, moon has so many holes and they're not all And then I don't like to hammer through my tape, so I'm just going to move that to the other side. And when I do this, you don't have to lift it up really high. I keep it really low and just kind of go up and down as quick as I can. Making sure you're also going along the edges, getting your edges. Get those nicely hammered. You're also not gonna, they're not gonna be super crisp. So if you hammer them, they'll kind of blend and be that more organic look like the rest of your hammer tone piece. All right, so I'm just gonna set that aside. I'm gonna come in with that other crescent. Um, one thing I do want to point out, I'm not doing it for this, but you can go ahead and hammer tone both sides. So if you were creating earrings with this, um, and you're afraid of them kind of spinning around and seeing both sides, I would go ahead and just hammer tone the back side. Um, that way it's going to have that same look throughout the whole piece. But I'm just going to be doing that top layer. So I want to make sure I have this moon, that crescent going this way, and I want my crescent to go the opposite way. So I'm going to go ahead and hammer tone this side. And again, 
I'm, on this one, I'm not going to do any order. I'm just kind of going sporadic and all over the place. One thing about doing both sides and hammering it is you're not going to have to worry about um, getting your crescents right while on your first go around and hammering. Don't forget your sides. I rotate my block. That's just a personal thing. There's no trick to it. If you're just starting out and trying to get into metal stamping, I feel like doing a hammer tone piece is so easy. Um, you're not having to worry about your letter impression being perfect. ahead and come in with that last circle piece and again you're just going to hammer that as well so this is an inch another thing I'd like to point out um, I actually had a customer pointed out to me she took the blank and she took I don't know if you can see in this willow set there's a little dot she just took that and she actually made a consolation on the big like just circle um, and then connected it to the other crescents. I thought that was a really fun idea if you're into constellation. Okay. Sorry, it's kind of hard to hear with this hammering going on. And I'm just going to go around the edges. I'm not hammering this one quite as much as my, my crescents. That's just a preference. Okay. So now, I don't know if you guys notice, but I only have one hole. So how would I connect these? I need to go ahead and take my hole puncher, my metal hole puncher, and create a hole. So you got two sides on here. One's a very small one and one is like a, a larger size. I don't know. I don't have my packaging to be able to tell you uh, what the meter is. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go with that larger size I think. Actually I have smaller jump rings so I can do a smaller jump ring. I'm going to try to hold this while I show it off to you guys. So I just want to make sure I have my dots lined up. This dot is going to be lined up with the um, little post that comes down and it's going to create the hole. And then now it's nice and tight and I'm just going to screw on into it. It'll be kind of tight at first and then you'll feel the pressure release. That means you've gone all the way through and then you just want to hold your piece and twist it all the way out. And I have my two holes there. Now if you wanted to do that bigger hole, I do suggest um, you're going to have to punch your other hole that's already in the piece, otherwise it's going to be much smaller, okay? So make sure you're using that smaller punch. And I just kind of go all the way down to where I can just barely slide barely slide my piece in I'm going to line them up I think that's about lined up and then I'm just going to twist it down. They'll have that pressure at first and then you'll just feel the pressure release. And then you can just twist it on back up. And you'll do this on all of your pieces.
I don't know why I can always get it lined up on the crescents, but I actually really struggle in getting my hole lined up on the circle. Um, I have before taken a ruler and just taken like a little marker and marked it before I hammered. Um, that is a great, great way to get your dots in line. But like I said, I am an eyeballer. If you guys have been watching me do videos, I eyeball everything. <laughs> There's pros and cons to it. Okay. All right, perfect. Now I could leave these like that. Let me move this so you guys can see. I can leave them just like this. Oh, Terry, you could use tape. I could have just took my straight tape and just gone straight down. Um, I have not actually used a hole punch to go through the tape. Um, I'd be a little nervous that the it might get stuck on there, but you could create a line and go straight, like kind of nudge it straight up on it and then make the hole. That's a great idea. Thank you, Terry. Okay, so from here, again, I could just leave them where they're nice flat pieces, connect them, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to make them a little bit domed. So I got this nice little tool here. This is where the holder is, but this has a little dome spot in here. And all I do, you want to put face down whatever side you want to dome and curve out. I'm going to have that hammer tone look coming out when it's setting. And I just set it right down there in the middle. The little doodad here. Um, he's got like a plastic and it won't ruin any of your metal here. I just put that right in the center and then I'm just gonna hammer, okay? So that'll slightly start to dome it and then what I do is I actually kind of push it to the side and get it a little bit more domed. Um, kind of just depends on how, how much you want it to curve out. If you want it a little, you can just keep it right in the middle, hit it a few times and you're good to go. If you're really wanting some curve, just kind of work it in your little pot here. See, just a nice little, nice little curve to it. I don't know if you guys can see that very well. Maybe I'll bring it up compared to a straight one. See how it just slightly is domed? I can just keep going for as long as I want. Um, I do find, because this guy can kind of move, I like to kind of hold him with the, my outer fingers and my palm. And then I can use this to just kind of adjust my piece and my hand for the um, metal that's in there. Otherwise, I don't want it to be moving around on you guys too much. And look, we can do shapes here. So. Just gives it such a cute little curve. I love it. Makes it feel a little bit more moon-esque. Can you still stamp symbols or word before curving? Oh yes, you can totally come in here, um, stamp a little word on here. I think it'd be cute to have like a word um, on that centerpiece I'm gonna do on that full moon. But you could completely stamp over it. Um, only thing is, if you when you fill in the word with enamel, you might be also filling in the holes that you create with the hammer tone. Um, so you'll have to be really careful when filling in those letters. If any of you guys make uh, bracelets. It's really fun. I love to kind of mix up my um, bracelets and have a hammer tone one and one with words and create kind of a stack look. Oop, I actually curved this one a little bit more, so I'm going to bring this back over. Curve this one. So they're a little bit more like, okay. 
And then I'm setting my moon up like this, my moon phase. But you could do it the opposite way, whichever, um, whichever you prefer. And I'm just going to come in with those jump rings. And just connect them, okay? Oops. If I can get my piece on. I do suggest having two pliers when connecting them. You can do it with one, but it is a little more difficult. Or you ruin your fingernails, one or the other. I ruin my fingernails all the time. So when you're connecting this, um, just make sure you got your phases going opposite ways, okay? Ah! My hands are too sweaty, you guys. Make sure my phases are going the right way here. I'm struggling, I'm sorry. Gotta make sure my face is going the right way. Okay, now I'm gonna close it up. And I am gonna go ahead and just put Put that jump ring on this piece because he's going to be connecting to my necklace. If you don't like these super close, you could put extra jump rings in. I actually have kind of small ones here. Um, so you could go up a size. These are just some five millimeters I'm working with. So on the top one, that's going to connect to my um, chain here. All right, so now I wanna add that beautiful aura beads on, okay? So I'm just gonna cut the string so I can get my beads. I'm just gonna put a little bit in here because I did prep this a little bit. So I'm wanting to put a fun little bead at the bottom here and I got these nice little fancy pins here I can't make a fancy little tie at the bottom of my bead so I'm gonna slip my bead on and see how cute that is now I'm gonna come in with that one step looper you guys see where that went you slide it right in between these two and it comes out a hole on the other side. And then all I have to do, and it creates that loop for me. Easy peasy. And I'm gonna connect them right to the bottom here. I love the one step loopers. It's such an easy way to add on to your pieces. Um, if you're not good at loops and keeping them consistent like I am, it is a one time saver and a lifesaver. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and make that chain. So I'm making chain all the way. So I'm going to come in with that. I believe I have a 20 gauge here. I'm just going to take a small piece, cut it. And then I go ahead and make a loop on one side. So again, I go through and I come out on that other side and make a loop. Now I'm going to slide that bead on. And from here, when I have this on here, it will loop the wire this way. I like my loops to, to end on opposite sides. So I make sure that's facing me. Slide that right in there. Oops. 
right up against the bead and again just whoop. so easy you guys I love this one step looper okay I'm gonna do a couple more just to show you and then you just connect them all together to create your piece so again I have that open end facing me where it finished for my first time I squeezed this one step looper and then I want to face the opposite way that way see how they oops see how they go the opposite way I just think it gives it a little bit cleaner look you can totally have them go the same way but that's just a personal preference and then I usually, what I do is I actually create a pile and then what I do is just connect all of them at the end. So sometimes you gotta open them up a little bit. Close them. And then just keep on connecting them down the line. So easy. And then once you have them all done, like I got these guys here, you can even, you can make it long enough just to slip over your head or you can connect it with um, like a lobster clasp. But I'm just gonna be doing this a slip over my head. So I like to connect these. I come in here and connect my moon. If it'll go on. And then I connect my other strand. Oh, I'm dropping everything, you guys. I'm sorry. I'm struggling today. I just connect them all together. Then I close it up. Again, mine is one that I'm gonna be able to slip over my head. You don't have to make your chain that long. You can easily just throw on a lobster claw and one of your jump rings on the other side to be able to close. But oops, so easy peasy, you guys. These would also make really cute earrings and not add the chain. It would be so cute. I, I might have to make myself a pair of earrings now too. Um, Patty, this is, I don't know what color this is, but this is our aura beads. Um, I think the vendor just calls it a white aura bead, but it is so pretty. We have so many other ones. Um, all of our stores should have just got a good amount in, so go check it out. And yes, One Step Looper is this amazing tool. He's my, if you're doing any bead work, he's your go-to, okay? <laughs> I would love to see any of your guys' creations you are doing. Um, please share onto our Craft Warehouse Beading Group or any of our groups for that matter. We'd love seeing what you all are doing, um, especially during all these hot days. <laughs> All right, you guys, um, I'm going to go back and make sure I got any questions and have a good evening and stay cool.